everyone. I'm so glad you joined us today on Fellowship Mountain. I hope you enjoyed time with your family last week, reflecting on Easter and the fact that Christ not only died for us, but he rose again. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at that story. But first, I have a little activity for you. On the screen, you're gonna see a few different emojis. I want you to think about the disciples and how they must have felt when their close friend Jesus was crucified on the cross. They saw his body nailed to the cross, and then they saw him being buried in a tomb. How do you think they felt? How do you think you would have felt? I'm gonna give you a few seconds to talk about that with your family. I don't know about you, but I think I would have probably felt scared and sad if I were one of Jesus's friends and I knew that he was about to die on the cross. Today, we're gonna dive a little deeper and learn more about Christ's love for us and how he overcame death. I'm gonna do a simple drawing and I'd love for you to join me. I'll give you a few seconds to grab a marker and some blank paper. Okay, we're gonna start by drawing a hill. Have you ever climbed something really tall? Or maybe you've been on a really challenging hike. Starting at the bottom, it can be very intimidating. We might look up and see many things that we have to overcome. Before Jesus did the most amazing thing ever, he had to start at the bottom too. Jesus had to climb literally to the place of most extreme pain. In his climb to Calvary or Golgotha, Jesus would overcome many painful challenges. Everything was taken from him, including his life. Jesus was an innocent person, but the religious leaders were upset with the way that his life had upset their belief systems and their religious traditions. So they took matters into their own hands. They wanted it so badly that they delivered Jesus to Pilate. Pilate was the judge who would decide what to do. He had the power to free one of the prisoners, but he gave the choice to the people that day. Since they had accused him of so many things, the religious leaders didn't think twice about stirring up the crowd to release another prisoner. They released Barabbas instead of Jesus. And then Jesus experienced the lowest place of his life on earth. The whole crowd turned against him. Even one of his closest friends turned against him. He was hurt by the hands of soldiers and experienced so much pain. He was forced to carry a cross to the place he would suffer and even die. Can you imagine being made fun of like that? His pain was so real. People could see Jesus and his suffering and Jesus even called out to God while he was suffering. He wondered if maybe God had deserted him on his climb to Calvary. Death was what Jesus experienced at the end of his climb that day. Why did Jesus have to go through all of this? Why did he have to climb the mountain and die? For me and for you. Because what happened after Jesus died would make it possible to save us. Thankfully, the story doesn't end there. We're gonna learn more about today's Bible story, but first, let's worship God through song and thank Him for all He has done for us. There's a reason why the curse of sin is broken. There's a reason why the darkness runs from light. There's a reason why we stand here now forgiven 
Jesus is alive. There's a reason why we are not overtaken. There's a reason why we're dancing through the night. There's a reason why our hope remains eternal. Jesus is alive. There's a reason why our hearts can be courageous There's a reason why the dead are made alive There's a reason why we share His resurrection Jesus is alive Praise the King could not ignore it when all of heaven's roaring hell where is your victory and death where is your sting the world could not ignore it when all the saints are roaring hell where is your victory and death where is your sting praise the king he is risen praise the king he's alive Let's imagine we're climbing a mountain. On the way up, you don't see very much. You might see some trees, some grass, maybe a little stream or something like that. But once you get to the top, the view is breathtaking. It's hard to imagine what the view would be like on the way up, but it's worth it once you get there. Today, we're talking about something else that's hard to imagine. Something that's true and amazing, but sometimes just hard to imagine. We're gonna read from Mark 16, verses one through eight. You can look it up and read along with me. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. 
Today's Bible story tells us that Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus is alive. Can you say that with me? Jesus is alive. Three women went to the place where Jesus was buried when the Sabbath was over. Does anyone know what Sabbath is? The Sabbath is a day of rest. The Sabbath ended at sunset on Saturday around 6 p.m. I wonder what spices they brought. Maybe some Italian seasoning, some garlic, maybe some cinnamon. Mm, I don't think they're talking about spices that we use today to put on our food. I think the spices they brought were most likely a mixture of aloe and oils used to cleanse and preserve his body in the tomb. But when they arrived at the tomb, the stone that closed the tomb was not there. It had been moved. When the women went inside, they saw a man dressed in a white robe sitting inside. That was definitely not what they were expecting. The man told them that Jesus had risen, that Jesus was not there. The women were both scared and shocked. The man told them to go tell Jesus' disciples that Jesus was alive. We do a lot of fun stuff at Easter. We go on egg hunts, we have Easter baskets with candy, we play fun games, and all of that is great. But Easter is about so much more. Easter is about remembering what Jesus did for us. Jesus died on the cross and he rose again so that we can have a relationship with him. That leads us to this week's big idea. This week's big idea is that Jesus overcame death. Can you say it with me? Jesus overcame death. I'm gonna say it once and then I want you and your family to say it twice. Jesus overcame death. Can you imagine being at Jesus' tomb that morning with the three women? I'm going to put some emojis back up on the screen. What an amazing experience it must have been. The women may have come to the tomb sad and fearful, but they left with joy and amazement. How do you feel knowing that Jesus overcame death? Turn to someone watching with you and on the count of three, tell them. One, two, three. Thankful. Jaden Alm, and I'm going to be reading Romans 10:9 in Bahasa Indonesia for you guys. Sebab kalau saudara mengaku dengan mulut bahwa Yesus itu Tuhan dan saudara percaya dalam hatimu bahwa Allah sudah menghidupkan Yesus dari kematian, maka saudara akan selamat. Romans 10:9. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm... And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hello and welcome there, kiddos. Welcome to Grow TV. Hope you all are doing well. I just want to start off by introducing someone special, <laughs> Mr. Knuckles. So say hello, Mr. Knuckles. Hello, everybody. I would say it's good to see you, but I don't have real eyes. <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Knuckles. <coughs> What's up? You right, Vanessa? Oh, sorry, that's my bad. Uh, let's say hello to my real friend, Vanessa. Hello! Say hello! Say hello, don't be rude, yes. Say hello. I don't think they can hear you. Oh, really? Well, okay. Say hello to Vanessa! No, because they're watching on screen. Oh, <laughs> got it, sorry. No worries, thanks for having me, Carl. I'm super happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. <laughs> What's that? I haven't heard that sound in ages. 
That means we got some super secret mail. Super secret mail? What does that mean? It means exactly that. The piece of mail is super secret. So close your eyes. Wait, what? Super secret mail only shows up when you close your eyes super tight. Okay. Wow! <laughs> super secret mail. Wow. Told you. Now let's see what's in here. I have no idea what's in here. Whoa! This is earth shattering. What did it say? I can't believe this. Why? Who? How? What? Ha! Ah! Are you going to tell me? I can't. It's super secret. And even if I were to tell you, I can't. Because it's super secret. And the message would freak you out. Just let me look. What? I told you. I'm kidding. I already knew this. Did you not know? Of course not. Not that you did either. Of course I did. It's in the Bible, Carl. Excuse me? I mean, come on. It's the big thing in the Bible. Open up your Bible, Carl, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. It's talking about how the two Marys in Siloam went and bought spices to visit the place where Jesus was buried. Now, what kind of spices do you think they bought? Cayenne pepper? Smoked paprika? Or maybe something like Tony's Cajun? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can safely say it wasn't any of those. It was the spice people used to honor the people they loved in those times. Oh, that makes more sense. It says that they went to the tomb and the big rock in front of the tomb was rolled away. Wait a second. Wasn't it supposed to be covered? Yes, sir. But that day was a whole lot more different than any other. You see, there was a man sitting there in a white robe where Jesus' body should have been laying. What? Jesus wasn't there? Somebody moved the body? Keep reading. Says the ladies were alarmed, but the man said they shouldn't be. He said Jesus was risen? Keep reading. Okay, then the man told them that they needed to tell the disciples that Jesus has risen up and that he is head of the Galilee, just like Jesus had said before. What in the world? Told you so. How in the world did I never know this? My whole life I've lived not knowing that Jesus rose from the dead? No way, Carl. You've known about this for a while. What are you talking about? I can never forget such an important thing. You always said that you're a pretty forgetful guy. Don't you remember always saying that? I don't, you, oh, yeah, you're right, okay. It's just that I've loved Jesus my whole life because I know how good he is and how much he loves me. But I forgot how much. I mean, he died. Yes. And then he rose again. Yes, again. It's so unbelievable that I forgot. What do you mean? Well, we forget amazing things all the time. The fact that we can make noises with our mouth and people can understand. The fact that we're living on a giant rock that's floating through a huge amount of space. And that the Son of God died for us and rose three days later. All because he loves us. How awesome is that? It's very awesome. It's very easy to take all these wonderful truths for granted because they've always been there. I'm so glad we had this super secret mail to remind us today. Because really, this message shouldn't be super secret. We should tell everybody. I agree. I love what that piece of mail said. Wait, I forgot what it said. What did it say? <laughs> it says Jesus overcame death. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's awesome. Not only is that great news, but that's our big idea. <laughs> Today's big idea is Jesus overcame death. So let's say it out loud to the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus overcame, overcame death. death. Yeah. <laughs> he sure did. Right? Right. Right. Well, I learned a lot today. I'm glad. Oh, look, I found another envelope. Oh, really? What does it say? It says there's something on Carl's sweater. Huh? I don't see. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Yeah, whatever. Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Roll TV. Okay, let's pray. Jesus. Thank you for what you did on the cross, for giving your life so that we can have a relationship with God. Thank you for overcoming death and giving us all of this good news that we can share with others. Amen.